All right, guys, Adam Trigger here, back with another college basketball preview as we roll on to opening day, November 4th. We're not that far away. I can't wait. And my special guest today, someone you guys all know and love and know well, is Brian Power. BP, welcome in. Are you as excited for the start of College Hoop as I am? Yes, I am. Uh, now, I am also uh, is excited to uh, talk about our trip last year, of course, uh, to the what are the Peterson Event Center? What a trip that was! We got to see Pitt play Duke in person. So, eh, you know, obviously there's a lot of turnover in college basketball year over year. So you can't say just because you saw a team last year, you know the team well. But uh, there's a lot to unpack here, and very excited to bring it break it down with you, of course. Yeah, we had a great time. I uh, I dragged you there on a weeknight. I said, BP, I'm high on this Pitt team. I want to go see them play Duke. You were like, I'm only a couple hours away. We ended up staying over. I think we had, we were eating tacos at like midnight somewhere. Realized that no one really goes out in Pittsburgh on a weeknight, um, you know, after yeah. about 11 p.m. But uh, Peterson Event Center, absolutely beautiful facility. I had no idea it was that nice. I also, I guess, didn't realize how big it was. Uh, I think I kind of downgraded Pitt from a home court advantage perspective, um, you know, it, the rest of the way because I realized they weren't filling the place. So I guess let's start there, BP, because, you know, Pitt, they had a couple of down years, but two years ago, kind of come out of nowhere, make the NCAA tournament, win games in the tournament. Last year, I, I was pretty high on them. I thought they overachieved, maybe run out of gas a little bit toward the end, maybe get snubbed from the NCAA tournament. You know, they, they were a team that kind of uh, landed on the bubble and, and on the wrong side of the bubble last year, but I'm high on Pitt again this year. I I'm actually... I'll go as far as to say I think I'm as high on Pitt coming into this season as I've been in a couple of years uh, because I really think this team could take the big step forward. My my ceiling for them is a top 25 team that makes the NCAA tournament and contends for a top four spot in the ACC. And I also think there's going to be some really good spots to bet on this team. So let me know if you agree or disagree. What, what, how are you seeing Pitt coming into the season? Well, it's hard, Trey, to talk about Pitt without taking a step back to look at, at the ACC in the big picture, right? Obviously, every single human being on God's green earth is going to have Duke and North Carolina one and two. Then you have this large swath of teams, right? What, three through nine? Where you're going to get a lot of maybe disagreement about the order. Pitt, back-to-back -back top four finishes in the conference. You mentioned, uh, you mentioned last year kind of maybe a snub from the NCAA tournament. They were a little salty. They refused the NIT bid. Uh, they, I think, were the second highest rated team in Ken Palm that didn't make the NCAA tournament behind only St. John's, mm -hmm. if memory serves me correct. So could they? Be, yeah, I mean, and they come into the year pretty much where they left off, sort of as a fringe team for those who put stock in this sort of thing. I think Joe Lenardi has them coming into the year, and this obviously means nothing, but it's fun to talk about, I guess, uh, as the last team in his projected initial bracket. Now, I think Pitt has as good an argument as anyone to finish third in the ACC, right? Maybe maybe if you twist my arm, I'll say Wake Forest is the best team to finish third. But Pitt, certainly from a consistency perspective, is right there because you look at the two, two teams that made deep runs in the tournament last year, Trick Clemson and NC State. Are they going to be as good this year? No. You look at two teams that dropped off that, you know, are going to bounce back this year, but how much do they bounce back? Miami and Louisville. We don't know. There's new teams in the ACC, like SMU. Where do they fit in? So, I mean, all those teams are kind of battling for Pitt, and I feel like they're all going to be on the NCAA tournament bubble. It's really going to come down to head-to-head, -to -head, and then, you know, you fast forward, what, five, six months from now? It's the ACC tournament. How do they do? How do you finish? So um, it'll be interesting to see, I guess. But, yeah, I mean, I, I think absolutely they have as good a chance as anybody to finish top three, top four in this conference. And it, uh, with the exception, obviously, Duke and North Carolina have the best chances. They will be one of them. Yeah, so I want to go off two things that you just said because, you know, you, you alluded to them landing on the bubble. Uh, definitely a, a weak non-conference schedule sort of did them in last year. And, and I think they'll, they've remedied that as I look at their schedule this year, which we'll, we'll talk about at the end. Um, but, yeah, how, how did you finish, right? Like, good chance if they can get over the hump and beat, I think it's North Carolina in the ACC tournament, maybe it gets them in. They lose that game. But but ultimately, they were better the second half of the season. Pitt was better when Jalen Lowe started to, to sort of flourish in the point guard spot, and they were able to move Carrington to the two 
and, and their offense, you know, kind of, you know, we, we laugh about it because you had this great in-person under streak going BP. And this was a game where I remember we were on our way out there and you're like, Trick, I actually love the under tonight. And, and it hit easily because we saw Pitt yes. Duke, I think early January before, before they really knew what they wanted to do offensively. And, and really, if you go back to last season, that was, you know, move low to the point guard position, let Blake Hinson do whatever he wants because he was that good and let Carrington play off the ball. Now, potential problem, no Carrington, no Hinson. But I still, there's still a lot to like about this roster. And I think, you, you know, Jalen Lowe now coming out this year, second year sophomore, playing the point guard right off the bat, uh, I think is, is huge for this team. So let's talk about the roster a little bit. Even with Lowe, mm-hmm. maybe taking a step forward offensively, this still looks like a team that's going to really rely on on defense and rebounding to win games. Um, you know, to tell me how your I guess your overview of this team from a defensive standpoint, and if you if you're going to approach them a certain way from a totals position, uh, you know what you see in that regard. Yeah, it was funny. I, I think we caught them on their worst night last year that Duke game because they always <laughs> scored 53 points. They were horrific from three. It was great for me having bet the under in that game. They lose their next game to Syracuse, but then came that big finish you just spoke about. They win ten of their last 15 games. But it was that fifth law, that last one to North Carolina. If they won that, who knows what the thing is. Um, now, yeah, you mentioned what they've lost, but they are bringing back four of their top six scores. Leggett is the guy to watch. You know, he transfers in from Rhode Island last season, averages 12 points, five rebounds, I think over a steal per game. So, you know, there's a lot to like. And they also, they recruited well. There's a lot of talent on hand here. So, I go back to what I said earlier, Trig, with in terms of the consistency and lack of question marks. When you look at these ACC teams, three through nine, I think that they have the fewest question marks roster wise uh, of that group. There's just a lot you can count on. Obviously, um, you, you talk about the defense now. Uh, really down the stretch, though, this team was putting up a lot of points. Before they ran into North Carolina, what did they do? They topped 80. In four straight games, they topped 79 and five of six. I mean, you look right here down the stretch, it was the offense that got going. They scored 86 yep. or they scored 79 or more in each of their last six wins last season. So that was huge. Uh, it, can they keep that going? I don't know. I mean, like you said, college basketball, game to game, you see a lot of inconsistency from that behind the three point line. So, um, how quickly can some of the new pieces gel? Can Leggett step up? Be that primary guy. Uh, I think that has a long way to go in what this team's ceiling is, whether or not they can stay in the top 25 for any prolonged stretch. Yeah, I mean, they finished top 50 in defense in Ken Palm last year, but no question, they were definitely, toward the end of the year, it was it was the offense that kind of carried the team, and that will kind of be the question mark this year. Now, you mentioned Ish Leggett. I'm with you. I think he's a huge part of this team. You know, last year, the guys that could really turn it on, offensively were Hinton, Carrington, and Leggett. Hinton and Carrington are gone. Leggett was the sixth man of the year in the ACC last year, VP. He, he's going to need to do it on a more regular basis this year. He was a little bit inconsistent in that regard, but it was okay because you had a Hinton, you had a Carrington. Now Leggett needs to be that guy. I will. I, this is something I really like. Recently in college basketball, with all the transfer portal stuff, I, I'm looking at teams that have portal guys that are in or I'm sorry, transfers that are now in their second year. And you you touched on one of them with Leggett. There's a second one on this roster in Zach Austin, who came over from High Point two years ago. He's someone I was really high on, you know, during his time at High Point. Didn't quite pan out last year from a from an offensive standpoint, just 6.5 points per game. He kind of took a backseat offensively to the other guys. But as far as like being a complete player, I mean, he's a phenomenal athlete, fantastic defender. I'm kind of looking for him to take a step forward offensively this year. And Damian Dunn comes in for Houston. And I'm almost, I'm almost going to group him in with these guys because he's a grad transfer. So he's only going to be there one year. But this is a guy that at Temple could really score. Last year goes to Houston. He's not as big of a piece of the offense. But now he comes back to Pittsburgh where he's probably going to be asked to score again. I almost think if you get the Damian Dunn from two years ago, that that kind of balled out with Temple and was was always as you know was one of their top scorers always among the top scorers low legged Dunn Austin that's not a bad kind of one through four to, to pair with the front court are you 
in agreement or do you see any do, do you see them struggling to score in comparison to last year? I mean, look, if any team in the country, it's hard to score as much as they did down the stretch, right? I mean, I don't think you can count on that sort of spurt all the time. But again, I go back to when I look at these rosters, okay, and compare them to who they're fighting with for the to, for kind of, uh, you know, into that top four in the ACC. I, I think this team does, again, have the fewest kind of question marks roster wise because, you know, again, there's teams that are going to take a step back, like Clemson and NC State, we mentioned. And then while Miami Louisville bounce back, obviously Louisville was in the abyss, uh, you know, the last couple of years. Miami, huge drop off last year. How much will they improve? So I don't know. I, I look at that roster and, and like uh, like we said, top to bottom. I think there's what ten guys who can contribute. I think that you've got. And you know, another thing to consider, Trig, that schedule is always so key. And the ACC, I keep coming back to it. It's an expanded league. They don't have to go out west at all this year. Cal and Stanford come to pick. Their longest road trip in mm-hmm. conference is going to be SMU. So that's they didn't get a bad deal there. I think we're going to get a lot. When we're going to start to really find out where this team is at, it, they should get ease into the year well. Five straight home games. Four of them should be easy wins. Then comes the MTE, yep. and then they get three true roadies, Ohio State, Mississippi State, and then the uh, conference opener with Va Tech. That is when we're going to know about this roster fully. So, um, again, they've got some time to, you know, early November to iron out the kinks, get this roster to gel. But that's the time, I think, where we're going to find out where this uh, uh, team is really at right there, late November, early December. Yeah, I mean, listen, we'll we'll go to the schedule to wrap up here in just a minute. But another thing I want to point out when it comes to the roster, and you talked about the depth, there's five dudes on this roster that stand 6'10 or taller. And they don't mm-hmm. necessarily need them on the floor at the same time. So, you know, you've got the Graham twins, both of which should be good to go. I think Jorge was hurt, but he's going to be back at some point early in the season. Both can play the five. You got Corin, who comes in from Florida State, who was in like a rotation of, of bigs in Florida State. He's 6'10". Uh, the redshirt freshman from last year was Conte. And then an incoming freshman, Ande Njai, who all are all 6'10 or bigger. But the nice thing and the thing that speaks to the depth that you were kind of talking about, the least question marks, this isn't a team where you have to like, you know, you you have one seven footer and then it's like suddenly he's not on the floor. You have to totally redo, you know, your, your approach because there's five of them. And there's a good chance only one is going to be on the floor at once, maybe two, if they want to go a little bit bigger. Because, you know, low legged Dunn and Austin, in my opinion, are, are going to be on the floor a lot. Right. And that's potentially your one through four. You can go bigger with the bigs, but like I keep coming back to, you know, a couple freshmen. I, I typically don't look at the freshmen as much until I actually get to see them play. But I know Brandon Cummings is the younger brother of brother of Nelly Cummings, who I got to watch play a ton here at Colgate. And I believe he was on pit for his final year of, of, of um, eligibility. He's supposed to be pretty good. I think this roster is pretty deep, BP. All, all sort of points me to thinking that Pitt could be a pretty good team and maybe even an undervalued team this year coming into the season based on where some of these, you know, previews have them. Yeah, again, I, I mean, I, I keep, I hate to keep coming back to like the notion of is it top four or not? You know, this is not a, a soccer preview, if you will, where top four means all the world. But, um, you know, I, I think, what do you think? I mean, I think it's, a, do, you, do you, like I threw out Wake Forest as a team that I think could maybe make a jump because they had so much terrible three-point variance last year, Wake Forest, yeah. where that's something I look at and that could go the other way for them. So, but other than that, like I, I just, I wouldn't feel comfortable projecting any of these other teams finishing ahead of Pitt and you would think, unless if there's a bid thief in the tournament, finishing fourth in the ACC for a third, that should get you in the tournament. I mean, with the, the Ken Paul yeah. rankings were just released yesterday. They come in at 38 pit. That is fourth among all ACC teams. Yep. Uh, Clemson is third above them. But again, we don't know what Clemson's going to look like this year because they lost a lot. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I think it, it's the most boring thing to say about a team coming into the year. But I think they're very appropriately ranked. We know this is going to be a bubble team come March. And they're yep. priced as such and they're ranked as such. Yeah, I mean, Ken Palm, obviously, that comes out literally the day we're recording this. They, I, I was pleasantly surprised to see where Ken Palm had them ranked because I, I think Ken Palm is, you know, they, they're usually a, a trusted source. And they were higher than 
some other, you know, kind of previews I've I've read and seen. And and I, you know, so having them 38, that seems about right. I personally think they have the ceiling of being a top 25 team. So when we're talking about this in a betting context, as we wrap up our preview here, uh, I'm going to be looking for spots to bet them. You brought up the schedule. I think it's a great point. Those first five games, probably not going to have a good spot to bet on them early because they're at home. They're going to probably be laying big numbers. But for me, I'll be using those first five games as really like a kind of a, you know, to try to gauge where I really think they're at. You know, what what is the, what does the overall makeup look like? What does the defense look like? How are they getting their points? Because they go to an MTE where it looks like they'll play LSU and then either Central Florida or Wisconsin. And then they've got a road game with Ohio State, a road game with Mississippi State, and an early ACC road game at Virginia Tech. So if you want to bet on Pitt, there will be opportunities in that five-game stretch against power conference schools with three of them on the road and two on neutrals that you will have your chance to bet on Pitt. And I will be looking to bet on Pitt likely, you know, in that that sort of five game package, I think I'll, is where I'll probably look to, you know, to hopefully have my spots to play Pitt. So that that's kind of how I'm looking at this team, BP. Yeah. And we need to mention, you talk about betting on this team. This was a good team to bet on. For, it was an outstanding team to bet on down the stretch. I mentioned they went 10 and five straight up to close. Well, they only failed to cover the number twice. In that whole stretch. So it was a 12, 2, and 1 run against the number to close the season. So it's going to be really interesting. You know, this is a team that was consistently beating the number. How do odds makers have them priced, or do they remember? I mean, obviously, there's a lot of turnover year to year, so it may not matter. But it was a great team to bet uh, down the stretch. Uh, You know, they were favored in eh, less than half of those games, too. So they were a great bet as an underdog. Um, You know, they cut, they won, and they won outright as underdogs three, four, four times in that stretch. So sure. again, catch it. Will they, will they sneak up on anybody this year? Probably not, not after a finish like that, but uh, it remains to be seen a great team to bet down the stretch uh, last year at 12, two and one, the last 15 games. All right. That is our preview on Pitt. We'll keep an eye on that as we get into the regular season. Like I said, you're going to have like four or five games where you get to kind of look and see, Hopefully, for my sake, they don't cover some of those huge numbers out of the gate so we get a better number to potentially play them in those uh, MTE and, and, you know, road games against power conference teams. This was our pit preview. Thank you to my co-host, Brian Power. And go on to Wager Talk's YouTube channel where all of these will live in a nice playlist. Uh, You can watch them one after the other leading up to tip-off on November 4th and after November 4th, of course. But like and subscribe to our channel uh, and then head on over to Wager Talk, I have a great special up for the college basketball regular season. It's the biggest discount we're offering all year. Uh, Coupon code TRIGCBB, T-R-I-G-C-B-B, works on my full season. Uh, You're never going to see a rate that low the rest of the season, so grab that. Covers you for the whole year. We'll be going hard college basketball for the whole year, uh, and it starts on November 4th. One more time, thank you to my co-host here, Brian Power, and we'll see you guys for another preview next time.